Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch and welcome to another San Martin Top 10 video. They are surely one of the most prolific watch brands other than the big Japanese and Swiss boys. They pump out new models so fast I cannot possibly make individual reviews of them all. So instead, I make a couple of these top 10 videos now every year, timed to coincide with the biggest sales and therefore the best prices. And the 1111 sale is the biggest of them all. Now the sale itself starts on the 1st of November and runs until the 12th of November this year, but AliExpress allows you to put items in your cart before then, lock in the sale prices, and then come back in a few days time and check out. Now you saw the pop-up. This video is sponsored by the San Martin official store on AliExpress. I will therefore leave links to all 10 watches in the order that I show them in the description of the video, all at the San Martin official store, of course. And there's a fair mixture today, some retro style, some modern, there's even a few original designs, shock horror, but let's be honest, San Martin are not known for their originality. They are known instead for making the best watches on AliExpress and frankly, I think the best manufactured and best finished watches you can buy for less than 500 US dollars. The overall quality and standard of finishing on some of these pieces is just exceptional for the prices they are charging. Of course, if there's nothing here that tickles your fancy, you're not short of other options. I will leave a couple of links to my other San Martin top 10s at the end of the video. Let's get on with it. Now I'm gonna start today with a bit of a unicorn. It's a relatively original San Martin manufactured from TC4 grade five titanium alloy. They call it the SN007-T3. Now I'm not sure if this is San Martin's first titanium watch, but it's certainly the first one I've seen. It's a no nonsense big dive watch, very much in the Seiko Samurai vein. It's got the same angular, purposeful look overall and some impressive machining to the bezel. It's also got a cabochon crown, again, something I've not seen before with San Martin. This one is powered by a Seagull ST2100, which is their highly decorated ETA 2824 clone. So 25 joules then, a four hertz beat rate, and a 40 hour power reserve. I really like how they've continued the titanium tones on the dial, hands, and chapter ring also, and no date keeps the dial nice and clean, nice and symmetrical. And this one is just stacked with BGW9 loom, hands, bezel, indices, all fully loaded with the stuff. But I know what you're thinking, why have they put it on a leather strap? Well, I guess it keeps the weight down. This is a big watch, but it still only weighs in at 86 grams as supplied. And the leather strap is in fact rubber backed and waterproof. Again, not something I've seen from the brand before. So titanium case, case back, crown and bezel, waterproof strap, heaps of loom and a high beat auto. This one does have a slightly higher price tag than some of today's other watches coming in at exactly $300. So San Martin make a lot of homage watches, a lot of copied designs, but for a fraction of the cost of the original watch and with their brand name on the dial. A lot of people just aren't into homage watches and that's fine, but attitudes usually change at least a little bit when it's a homage of something much older discontinued and very expensive. And these next two watches are exactly that. The SN006-G2 is a homage of the Tudor Submariner. It most closely resembles the Tudors of the early 1960s, which featured crown guards, unlike a lot of previous models from the 1950s. It has drilled lugs, just like the original, and a huge piece of top hat sapphire crystal, aping the look of the acrylic crystal that these Tudor Submariners had. In keeping with the vintage style, this one is a 4020, but actually I think it wears a little bit smaller. Female end links definitely help with that. Now the snowflake hands are a nod to contemporary Tudors, even though the Submariners 1960s actually featured Mercedes hands. San Martin sell both. I'll leave links to both in the description of the video. This one is available with either a PT5000 high beat automatic or a Salita SW200 high beat automatic, both without a date complication. And again, you can get this either with the San Martin hexagon logo or you can go sterile, in a manner of speaking, of course. The price on these is from $277 upwards. There's anti-reflective coating under the sapphire crystal and plenty of BGW9 Swiss made superluminova on the hands and printed indices and the bezel insert, unlike the original, is high gloss ceramic. So you get vintage looks, but with modern creature comforts. Definitely something a little bit different then from the endless sea of regular Rolex Submariner lookalikes. Do you like vintage Patek Philippe's? 
but not their price tags. Do you like modern day homages of vintage Patek Philippe's from the likes of Ferland Mari and Corniche, but again, not their price tags? Well, this could be the San Martin for you then. It has the look of a 50s Patek in four different, much more modern colorways for the very reasonable price of just under 175 bucks. They call this the SN0101 and it's powered by the same Seiko VK64 Mecha Quartz chronograph movement as powers all those other Patek lookalikes. Now the VK64 does not have a ticking second hand so you would never know that this was battery powered by looking at it. The glass is sapphire with AR coating and the colours available are definitely a little bit more in your face than they were on vintage Pateks. This salmon one does look salmon from some angles but veers towards the orange from others, especially when combined with that orange strap. Indices are applied and look good, copying the original font, and crown and chrono pushers are also etched as per the original watch. Now the Hermes slash Epson style leather strap does look good, but it's perhaps a little bit stiff and a little bit thick. Easy to swap this one out for one of your own straps though, as it has 20mm lug width. Stick this one on a purlon and you will barely know it's there. 50 meters of water resistance is perfectly fine for this style of watch. You don't get the fancy packaging of the Fairland Mari, but you get pretty much the same watch and it doesn't cost $550. All right, next up is another San Martin original design and one that I know has been really popular with buyers. Now I featured the three hand version in a video this time last year. I took it up to Brisbane over the Christmas holidays and gave it a bit of a workout. Now they're back with a GMT version of the same watch. Do you know what? I much prefer this watch as a four-hander than as a three-hander. There was perhaps a little bit too much space on the dial before, which has now been filled by that fourth hand and the corresponding numerals. The whole thing just looks much more in proportion now than it did then. I think. Now San Martin haven't got on the NH34 train as yet, so this one is powered by the Hangzhou 6460. That's a clone of the ETA 2893, so it's a high beat Collars GMT with a 40 hour power reserve. But no date. Again, I'm seeing this trend a lot this year. A fourth hand, but no date. Let me know what you think about that. I definitely think it's a positive for this particular watch. I mean, where on earth would they have put a date complication on that dial anyway? It's, it's pretty busy already. This one wears really well because of a short lug to lug and the wrist roll is pretty spectacular thanks to that multifaceted bracelet. You're probably gonna be wearing it loose though because it's a butterfly clasp with no half links. And one thing I think is missing is some San Martin branding on the two links at the butterfly fold over. That would have taken it up a notch for sure. There's plenty of loom and 100 meters of water resistance with a screw down crown. This being a high beat GMT, it's the most expensive watch on today's list, available either with a logo or without a logo in blue or a rather fetching salmon pink, all for the same price of 320 US dollars during the sale. Moving on to something a little bit dressier and a little bit more vintagey. This is arguably the prettiest watch on today's list. It also happens to be the cheapest. Leaning heavily on the Longines Heritage Collection, San Martin referred to this retro pilot's watch as the SN0105. It comes in two versions, either with the San Martin logo, which thankfully is also retro style or sterile, both for just over $150. Don't forget San Martin offer a custom dial printing service on this and many of their other watches so you can get whatever you want on there, but there is an extra cost and an extra delay in delivery associated with that. Now there is perhaps a reason why it's the cheapest watch on the list today. That lovely domed crystal is only K1 hardened mineral crystal and not sapphire. So you can't bash it about like some of the other watches on the list but why would you want to bash it about? This thing is gorgeous. Lovely blue leaf hands with a needle second hand and a well-proportioned printed dial. There's also that fairly discreet signature freckling pattern on the dial in black to match the numerals and the train track. It's a really nice eight millimeter plus crown suggesting a manual wind movement, but this one is powered by the Seiko NH35. The crown's only a push pull, but it still manages 100 meters of water resistance. And don't quote me on this, but the strap with the sealed sides looks like one of those water repellent ones that Spinnaker used to supply with many of their dive watches. Overall, nicely proportioned and nicely priced. At number six, it is one of my personal favorite San Martins. It's certainly the San Martin that I have worn more than any of the others. It's their 30 39mm oyster style case from their cunningly titled Explore Climbing Series. No one could possibly guess what they were referring to there, eh? 
Now this is the version 2 which comes with applied indices rather than the printed dials of the version 1. It also comes with the newer San Martin hexagon branding. There it is, you can see all of that next to my older V1. Definitely Rolex inspired then, but those smaller Arabics at 3, 6 and 9 echo the look of older 6000 series explorers from the 1950s and the 1960s. Available in black or with the Tiffany dial, branded or sterile, and with your choice of movements, either a Seagull, ST2130 or Solita SW200. Prices on these start at $280, but do go all the way up to $390 with the Swiss movement. So why is this my favourite then? Well, it's just such a nice watch to wear. I think Rolex were mad to discontinue the 39mm Oyster Perpetual and 214-270 Explorers. That case hits such a sweet spot for so many people, me included. This San Martin arguably wears better than the Rolex because it has more adjustment in the clasp and it has the bonus of female end links. 100 meters of water resistance, a screw down crown and enough loom to last the night make this a great all rounder. Such an easy watch to wear, but a hard watch to take off. Perfect for a daily then, but no date to worry about if it is only an occasional wear piece. You are going to have to think about the price seriously though if you do want a Swiss movement, the Solita powered versions are not cheap, and black is probably the version to go for if you're in it for the long haul. Who knows when the Tiffany bubble will burst? But while that bubble is still very much intact, let's have a look at yet another pale blue dialed watch today. And not only is it blue, but it's square. This is the first square case watch that I have looked at in years. The last one being the Aquatico Supercharger way back when. No prizes for guessing where San Martin got their inspiration from for this one. There really aren't too many manufacturers other than Bell & Ross making these square case watches. This SN0074 very closely resembles the BR05, but for about $5,000 less cash. Now you're not short of options with this one. Three colours, blue, black and pale blue, and three movements. The 3 Hertz Orient sourced Epson YN55, the 4 Hertz PT5000, or the Swiss made SW200 by Solita. Prices vary considerably, therefore, from $230 to $410. Frankly, I'd be suggesting you go for the most economically viable one possible. The Epson movement, like I have in this one, is great. Now let's have a look at the wrist shots. I think there is an optimal size window for this watch, somewhere between six and a half and seven and a half inches. It has an integrated bracelet, which is gonna restrict your ability to wear it if you have a smaller wrist, and there weren't that many extra links supplied. I only had to remove two, which limits your ability to wear it at the other end. Now somewhat surprisingly, San Martin haven't put any minute markers on the dial. Bit of an odd choice. It keeps the dial nice and clean, but it will cause you problems setting the watch accurately. Accurately. They've also opted not to put a date at the 3 o'clock like Bell & Ross do. Again, it keeps the dial clean, but you lose the utility of a date complication. Now, square watches are not an everyday sight, at least not where I am anyway. I'm not sure I will ever be of a mind to drop five grand US dollars on one, but if you fancy something different for a lot less money, this one actually wears much, much better than I was expecting it to. Okay, next up we have a very well-priced dive watch with Doxa Vibes. It's similar to, but definitely not identical to, the Doxa Sub 600T. San Martin call this one the SN067, and it has a great set of dimensions and specifications for the money, I think. Five different color versions of this one are available, including classic orange, Doxa blue, blue, silver, and retro black. They're all the same price, just over $200 during the sale. 40 mil across the case, but 39 mil across the bezel, which is a neat visual trick and helps bring the perceived size of the watch down, especially when it's on wrist. And it has a lovely brushed stainless steel bezel. The vast majority of the watch is brushed stainless steel, but there's a nice high polish chamfer running the length of the upper edge of the case. The bracelet is an all brushed three link oyster style with a nice taper and the San Martin push button clasp that you see on half of these watches today. The high polish chamfer on the clasp matches the high polish chamfer on the case. 200 meters of water resistance and a screw down crown with this one as well. The dial is printed and super legible thanks to the fact that the hands and indices are white but surrounded in black. In the back is an Epson YN55, the same reliable Japanese movement that powers the Orient Kamasu. It does have a ghost date position though. I definitely go for one of the funky colors. You can't go wrong with an orange dive watch, can you? 
Okay, not too many more to go now, and I've saved one of my favourites towards the end, the watch on my wrist. San Martin calls it the SN0107. You and I will immediately recognise it as a Tudor Ranger lookalike. Now, the Ranger, I don't think, has been one of Tudor's most successful releases this year. Everybody froths over the Pelagos 39mm instead, but people seem to think this one was a bit boring. Perhaps I'm a bit boring because I really like this San Martin version of it. It's a really simple and clean design. It is Tudor's Explorer equivalent after all. But check out how well finished this watch is. The brushing is beautiful. It has a piece of high topped double dome sapphire crystal. The bezel has a circular brush to it. And if you look closely, you can see the bezel has a high polished chamfer. It's tiny, but it's there. That combined with the high polished bevel towards the lug tip just gives the whole design a bit of a lift. Dimensions are fantastic as far as I'm concerned anyway. I think this is one watch that actually wears a bit bigger than you would think. It has Tudor's more slab sided case style, but it feels exactly like San Martin's 39mm oyster style case when it's on the wrist, and it has the same three-link oyster style bracelet and clasp. You can also add 100 meters of water resistance and a screw down crown. One thing to note though, the Fotina is strong with this one. Perhaps a little stronger than the renders in the listing suggest. Now they did send me this one a while ago, perhaps it's a V1 and they've already moved to a V2 which isn't quite so orange like they did with the BB Pro style GMT, but I can only review what I have in my hand. Now the use of a Seiko NH35 helps keep the price of this one relatively low at $225. As usual, logo and no logo variants are available. Gorgeous to look at, gorgeous to wear, definitely one of my favourites today. And finally at number 10, it's a dog on a skateboard. Perhaps not quite, but it is arguably the most quirky and left field watch on today's top 10 list. There's definitely a whiff of Panerai Radio Mir in this one with the California Fume dial, cushion case and pencil hands, but it isn't nearly as curved or as smooth as a Panerai, it's definitely more angular. The case and bezel are both all brushed, it features a chunky crown which screws down, 100 meters of water resistance and the Epson YN55, making its third and final appearance in today's top 10 list. And those lug ends are perhaps slightly sharper than I would have liked them to have been. But if you want a quirky and low key military inspired watch on leather that still has double dome sapphire, good loom and a comfortable strap without costing a fortune, you should definitely check this one out. These are available as always either branded or sterile for only $170. So there you have it, another top 10 new San Martins and frankly I could have made a top 15 or top 20 if I had included all of their new releases since I last made a top 10 video. Some great watches in amongst that lot, original and not so original designs, modern and not so modern designs. Personally, the freckle dial with the blue hands is a really sweet watch, and I'm a big fan of the two 39mm three-handers. The square case was a real surprise, and you can't be an orange diver. What about you? Was your favourite here, or did I miss something? Have they released a new killer watch this morning? Frankly, I wouldn't be at all surprised if they had. If nothing here floated your boat, why not check out either of these two top 10 San Martin videos? Thanks for getting to the very end of this one. I hope to see you again in the future.